So this is going to be a demonstration of spanning tree and how it breaks loops. So right here, I have a Cisco switch, uh, Cisco um, SBS switch uh, SG300, and I have plugged into it my laptop, which you can see just here on the screen. And it has an IP address and it's configured just basically and um, I shall be using a wireless keyboard to connect to my laptop which is seated off camera to the right. This is a normal CAT5 Ethernet cable, just um, normal Ethernet cable, which I shall leave plugged into one of the ports of this switch and then we shall see how spanning tree will help us deal with um, the issues of um, loops so first, if we um, look at the laptop, I will start by logging into the switch and if I can get the username and password right. I'm logged into the switch right now and um, on a different window, this one, I'm just going to run TCP dump. TCP dump is a packet capture tool. It will allow us to see um, the different packets that it sees on the interface. Um, EN7 is my um, Ethernet interface and this is the one that goes out um, into this cable. So I'll start TCP dump and as you can see um, on the screen you have some rapid spanning tree messages. By default, this switch comes with rapid spanning tree enabled. And if I, on the window, on the top right, um, if you just look at that window, um, if I now start a ping to some address which doesn't exist, on the left, you will see um, some packets, including ARP packets, and nothing happens because it can't find um, um, no one responds because that IP address does not exist. There are only two IP addresses on this network. But um, in terms of uh, packets forwarding, it, it happens at a normal rate. If I connect this cable and create a loop by just plugging it into the switch, um, like if I can see what I'm doing, connect this cable and create a loop like this. Um, the link comes up. Um, it will take 30 seconds. Spanning tree still continues doing whatever it's doing. And you can see here inside the window, you can see that um, there's a message that the link G5 uh, is up. Um, but then that is it. And if I try pinging um, again for this non-existent IP, I have a few ARP packets which are going around, some spanning tree, but nothing serious. And you can notice that it says that G5 had a forwarding status and then it was um, dropped after that for spanning tree. Um, so G5 is hard to see, but this is G5, this one. G6 is this one. Um, it's still in blocking state. It's only G5 which is forwarding. G6 is um, blocked and this breaks the, 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 the loop. So I will stop the ping so that we don't have ARP packets. And then inside my configuration window, um, and you can notice that each time I type, there's a lot of TCP packets inside the um, TCP dump window. And this shows um, us, the. It, it's also capturing the TCP SSH packets um, that I'm using. So I'm just going to enter configuration mode, and then I'm going to say no spanning tree. Okay. And this will turn off spanning tree. And um, at this point, um, if I exit or if I, I still have connectivity to the switch. But remember, spanning tree is off right now. But we do not have any broadcast packets on the network yet, so there is no problem yet. We do have a loop. 
So if I come to this window and again try to ping that very same um, IP, you'll notice that there's lots of ARP packets and that's what we call the broadcast storm um, because these packets are being repeated and repeated and repeated. And on this window, which has the console, if I try now to log in, to turn off, I can't really log in because um, it's using all the CPU resources. So I can't SSH to the switch and I can't change the spanning tree status. Um, for machines that do this, you have to come and find where it is and physically remove the cable. And as you can see, the ARP flood has stopped. And if I put the cable back in, in any port, doesn't have to be the same port, um, instantly, in a short amount of time, as soon as the ARP packet comes in, um, you will get another loop. Um, it will take um, maybe 30 seconds for this to come online um, because I don't have port fast enabled. And there we go, we have the loop. So when I take this out, then I will be able to log into the switch. I can enter configuration mode and then I can just say spanning tree. And that will turn on spanning tree. One of the side effects of doing this is um, it usually kills it kills your SSH session because the port will change status. Um, remember that we still have that um, ping session going up inside the window. And if I create a new loop again, any port, maybe the first one that we used, this loop here, you do not see a flood of packets inside the left window. So this is just a small demonstration of um, spanning tree on your network. Now, if you connect a switch like this to other switches, then you also get like a broadcast storm on those switches. Um, so on your network, even though you've enabled spanning tree, if there's a switch which does not have spanning tree and it has a loop inside that switch and it creates a broadcast storm, that storm will affect your switches which have spanning tree enabled. So you need to look at the other features that we talk about, including loop guard. Um, into, um, there's also a broadcast storm protection that you can turn on on edge ports so that if somebody plugs in something that does not do spanning tree and creates a loop that those broadcast storms that the device itself is creating don't tra um, um, go all the way through your network. Thank you.